All right, everyone, this is Zero Budget Geek, and welcome to Brass. This is a European style strategy board game designed by the award winning designer Martin Wallace. Now, Martin Wallace is known for uh, creating a number of uh, board games, and many of them have won many awards. And they're all uh, usually uh, very in-depth games that require a lot of critical thinking and uh, strategizing uh, in order to win. Now, it's not the type of game that I normally play, but I can tell you they're really, they're really good, even though it's not the type of thing that I normally play. And Brass is, is a definitely a, a deep, heavy game. And what I thought would be fun is if we go through the tutorial together to give you an idea if this is a game that you would like to play for yourself. So let's jump into the tutorial game introduction brass is a game about the beginnings of the industrial revolution it takes place in lancashire an english county in which modern industry was born let's go to work in this building, you are an industrialist who gains fortune and prestige by building their company. This won't be easy as you are not the only contender for the title of best industrialist and the competition will be fierce. The main idea of the game is to build new industries. You will build cotton mills and ports to allow you to sell cotton, shipyards to allow you to grow your fortune from rising ship demand, and coal mines and artworks to allow you to get rich from resources. Your prestige is awarded in victory points. Points are awarded for the activation of industries. Cotton mills and ports are active when cotton is sold, coal mines and ironworks when resources are depleted, and shipyards immediately after they are built. In order to build industries, you need money. Every turn you receive the amount of money that is equal to your income. You can improve your income by activating industries. Congratulations, you now know the game basics and its objectives. Further tutorial chapters will teach you how to build industries and connections. Let's go on to buildings. Building industries. In this tutorial chapter, you will learn how to build new industries and the connections between them. There are locations on the board at which you can build the industries. The location name is on the ribbon underneath. At each location, you can find slots for industries. The type of industry you can build is indicated by the icons. For example, in Preston, you can build a port, cotton mill, and ironworks. The basic condition for building an industry in a given place is having a corresponding card. There are two types of cards, location cards and industry cards. Location cards allow you to build any available industry at the location on the card. For example, using this card, you can build any industry in Preston. Industry cards let you build the industry shown on the card at any location that is connected with your canals or railways. Enough theory. Let's start by building industry in Preston. So we will select the uh, build icon down at the bottom there. We're going to select the location. It is Preston and we're going to select the build cotton mill and we must discard a card. We will discard the Preston card because that's the only one we can discard. And as you can see at the bottom, it checks off the actions as you do them. So we're going to go ahead and click the check mark down at the bottom right to show we're done with that action. Your cotton mill is ready. In order to gain points, you need to activate it. You activate cotton mills by selling the cotton to a port. We will cover this in the next tutorial. Let's end this turn. In the first game round, each player only has one action. Now it is your opponent's turn. Yellow player builds a cotton mill level one in Manchester. Violet player builds cotton mill level 1 in Manchester. And then we have a turn summary. 
The play order is determined in each turn. It depends on the amount of money each player spent in the previous turn. The less money a player spent, the sooner they will play in this round. Some industries require coal or iron to be built. Build a coal mine to make sure that you have access to that resource. You have an industry card with a coal mine. Use it to build. Using industry cards to build requires one of the following conditions. You own a connection that leads to the building location or you have other industry in that location. Build a canal to allow you to build a coal mine in Wigan. So we're going to select the build canal icon down at the bottom. We will discard a card and I think we can we will select the Wigan card there. We'll select the location. Click that canal there, Preston Wigan connection, click connect, and it marks off that we've selected the location. We will hit the check icon. Congratulations, you've built your first canal. No other player will be able to build another one here. You score victory points for each activated industry in, loca in locations connected to this canal. It is time to build a coal mine. You now have uh, a connection to Wigan. You can use an industry card to build there. So we'll select the build icon at the bottom. We're going to select the location. We're selecting Wigan and we will select build coal mine. We must discard a card. We'll select the coal mine card and discard that. And then we click the check icon. Congratulations! You have learned how to build industries using industry cards and location cards as well as how to build connections. You also know how the turn order is determined. In the next tutorial, you will learn how to use coal and how to activate a coal mine. Let's go on to advanced building. Industry activation and development. In this tutorial, you will activate your first industry, a coal mine, and you will learn how to increase your industry. In the last round, your opponent used one coal from the mine in Wigan. Your own coal mine has one coal. Coal from the mine is used to build advanced industries. When all the resources from a coal mine are used, the coal mine is activated and its owner gets victory points and income points. Build an ironworks. The ironworks provides the iron needed to build advanced industries and to develop. The ironworks requires coal. You always deliver coal from the closest coal mine. So we're going to select the build icon there. We're going to select an a location which is Blackburn and we're going to select the build ironworks. We will discard the build ironworks card. And then we're going to deliver coal to Wigan. And you see the little animation there, which is pretty cute. All right, hit the check mark. After, act ugh. After activation of a coal mine, your income is increased. The income points you need to get to increase your income level are displayed next to the income counter. When an industry is activated, you receive income points. Each income point moves your marker one field to the right. When the marker crosses a threshold, your income goes up. You can find a complete list of income levels in the summary screen. Industries have technology levels. The higher the technology level, the better the rewards for activating the industry. You will get access to higher technology level industries when you build a certain number of lower tech industries. The progress bar under the industries shows how many buildings you need to build to advance to the next level. You can speed up this process by using a development action. Develop cotton mills to the second technology level. Okay, so we're going to select the develop icon at the bottom there and we're going to discard a card and we'll discard that Birkenhead card. And then we're going to select the cotton mill because that's what we want to develop and we're going to hit the develop button there. As you can see, it's gone up a little bit more and we're going to get some iron from Blackburn. And we'll hit the check mark to end our action there. Do you want to develop again? One more development is available. Why, yes, good sir, I would like to develop again. 
So we'll select that. We're going to select the same place and develop that cotton mill. As you can see, it goes up and now the level of the cotton mill has gone up. And we're going to get some iron from Blackburn. And we'll hit the check mark there. Congratulations! In this tutorial, you've learned how to activate a coal mine, how to deliver coal, and how to develop industry. In the next tutorial, you will learn how to sell cotton and activate cotton mills and ports. Let's go on to selling cotton. Shipping Cotton Lancashire's economy at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution was based on trading cotton. In this tutorial, you will learn how to ship cotton and activate cotton mills and ports. Cotton is produced in cotton mills. You activate cotton mills by selling the cotton. In order to sell the cotton, the cotton mill has to be connected to a port using canals or rails. You can use connections that belong to any player to transport cotton. Cotton is always sold to a port. The port does not have to be yours. You can sell cotton to other players' ports. You can sell cotton to the domestic market or for export. If you sell to the domestic market, the port is activated. Selling cotton for export does not activate a port, but it can bring additional income. The actual demand for cotton is visible in the market's menu. The, market, the marker shows how many income points you will receive from selling the cotton. When the marker is in the lowest position, the cotton can't be sold. The demand is checked every time you sell cotton for export. The demand can stay at the same level or drop. If demand bottoms out, the cotton sale fails and the cotton mill does not activate. Sell cotton. Okay, so we're going to click the sell cotton icon and we're going to discard a card. We'll discard that Birkenhead card there. We're going to select the source, which will be Preston. We'll select that cotton mill and select sell cotton. And we need to select the destination. It will be Warrington and Runcorn. And as you can see, there's two options, sell for export, sell to port. We're going to, for the tutorial, sell for export. And then we need to select a field here to check the demand. So we'll click the first one there. And it's a minus two. So the demand goes down. And you can see the cotton being shipped there very cutely. Do you want to ship more cotton? The number of sell cotton actions you can still perform is one. Why yes, good sir, I would like to sell some more cotton. So we're going to select Warrington and Runcorn. We'll select the sell cotton and we're going to select the destination. This time it will be Southport and this time we are going to sell it to the port. So we're going to select that and click the check mark to end our action there. And you can see the cotton being transported to the port. Congratulations, you have just activated three of your industry buildings within a single action. Now let's go on to loans and income. Loans and income. Running your company requires financial resources. You can raise your income by activating industries, but you can always take a loan. Taking a loan brings you an immediate cash increase, but it also increases the running costs, so your income is lower. The bigger the loan, the more your income drops. Take a loan of $30. Where's that Frank? So I'm not sure what that is. We'll select the take a loan icon there. We must discard a card, so we'll get rid of uh, that Birkenhead card. And we're going to select the 30 francs. Hit OK. And we've taken a loan for 30 bucks. And as you can see, our income went down. Congratulations, you have just taken your first loan. Remember that proper loan management has a big impact on your success in the game. Let's go learn about markets. Markets. You know from previous tutorials that you need coal and iron for some actions. If there is a situation in which these resources are not available on the map, you can buy them from markets. There are two markets, one for iron and one for coal. You can buy these resources on the market. Their price increases when resources are purchased from market. 
you can only buy them from a market if you do not have access to them on the map. In order to buy coal from markets, you need to be connected to a port. When you buy iron, you don't have to be connected to a port. There is no coal mine on the map. Build an ironworks and buy coal from the market. So we're going to select the build icon down at the bottom and we're going to select the location. We're going to select Bolton and we're going to build an ironworks there. We'll discard the ironworks card and we're going to select uh, the coal there and the coal is going to get delivered to Bolton. Okay, and then we'll click the check icon to end that action. Your new ironworks produces iron. The iron market is empty, so your iron from the ironworks will refill the market again. You earn money for refilling the market. So as we can see, uh, some of the iron we're making goes up into the market. The markets let you build without having a connection to a coal mine and can be a good way of earning money. You can now get to the next, last tutorial, the end of era. End of era. Gameplay is divided into two eras, the canal era and the rail era. The game starts in the canal era. The second half of the gameplay takes place after the invention of rail and the rail era starts. During the era shift, there are two important events. All canals and level 1 buildings are removed from the board and the build canal action now becomes build railroads. The end of the era occurs when all of the investment cards are used. The end of the era starts with a victory points summary. There is a summary chart there. We'll close that. The next step is removing the canals and level 1 industries from the board. Don't worry, you won't get victory points gained from them. So removing tech level 1 industries and removing the canals. Now all of the industries that remained on the board will score again. Scoring victory points for advanced industries. When the new era starts, distant markets are ready to buy your cotton again. The cotton demand rises. Congratulations! You know now know how to play brass. Why don't you start a new game? Remember that there is a rule book in the menu, and you're gonna need it. So that is the game of brass, and hopefully, uh, going through this tutorial together gives you an idea of what this game is like. Now, don't expect to catch every nuance of the game through just one tutorial. It is really recommended that you go through it several times. This is a very deep game. There is a lot to it. It is a very, very fantastic game. Very well designed uh, by who, who you know he's. Martin Wallace, the designer, is pretty much a, a legendary designer at this point. And um, if this seems like a game that you would like, uh, be sure to go down in the description box to uh, see the link to where you can get it. Uh, right now, this is an iOS uh, game. And, um, you know, if this seems like something that you would like, go ahead and check it out. So, guys, I'd like to thank you for watching. Be sure to check in the upper right hand corner to see links to other games that I've done. And uh, until next time, 